Good evening. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. I am the West African correspondent, Edward Amara. Welcome to this platform where we inform, we entertain, we educate, and we try to do in as much as possible to come with to you the most important news emanating on the continent. As I normally say, Africa is a very important continent, a continent with huge development, be it political, be it economic, sports, musical, and whatsoever. The continent is so dynamic. And normally we have been faced with series of issues. That is why the continent, based on its youthful population uh, and its backwardness, Especially when uh, Africa was being carefully exploited by it, our European powers, those who colonize us. So now we are no longer living on the mentality, maybe sometime that we have developed a ginger Africa from one stage to another. Our African brothers and sisters have found themselves into a wanting situation. And we have, unfortunately, we have no option rather to even look up to our suppressors, our oppressors, our exploiters as if they are the only solution to our own problem. That is because mentally some of us, some, some African countries are deranged. War is taking place in most part of Africa. Or shall I say many countries in Africa, there is political destabilization. There is political volatile situation in certain part of Africa. There, the Africa lack that type of social cohesion. Because when you watch at how African began a progress just after we gain or many countries gain independence on the continent they are, it's, everything started to disintegrate instead of us to reintegrate we are disintegrating so we saw Africa retrogressing in terms of progressing we saw Africa dismembering from one nation to another because the nation was being split into factions you see some people with the French mentality some people with the British mentality some people with the American mentality, some people with maybe Russian mentality, some people will come with uh, like the Portuguese mentality. That is why you have the Bosophones, you have the Francophones, but different type of countries are just found on the continent. So since then, our situation has been deeply divided because uh, I think before the coming of Europeans on the continent, Africa used to have what it can maybe uh, the, our African pre-colonial system in Africa can actually be related to one party system because there was no divided loyalty. There was nothing like federation or what we call democracy today. Because democracy is actually good but it brings up different opinions, it makes people to be liberal and at the same time it brings up certain things. But normally tell people democracy is the best government actually for us to live on that. But come to think of it, Europe. Uh, uh, the world, Western world, before ever they developed to this particular stage, they actually went into different type of governance situation until liberal democracy came. Unfortunately, just after Africa gained independence, they introduced liberal democracy. When maybe the, the, there was, the mentality was not being implanted or planted on the ground, even those who were embracing it did not know how to preach it, so the foundation was lay appalling and we had series of issues. So based on those things, we are now seeing the ramification that is coming down heavily on the continent. Today we have important stories coming from the north, south, east, west, and majorly all over Africa. Let's first start in Gabon. Gabon, the other time I was on this show, we had another stories about them. And today, Gabon scrap full tax to ease cost, living cost. You see, one thing, when Ebola was in Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea, some part of Ivory Coast, maybe invaded Nigeria but less than a month, it left the country. We were so strong. And the world was turned its attention on this sub because it was just like an endemic thing. Oh, it was it was not an uh, it was it was just an epidemic. Because it was into Sierra Leone, into Liberia, into Guinea, some part of Ivory Coast, and it started a bit into Nigeria. Of course, there was a rumor that somebody died of it, or uh, died from it in uh, in in, in, Burkina, uh, in Guinea Bissau. But that was just something, an epidemic. It was a sporadic attack. 
So by then, we had the mojo, we had the support from the international community. We are still strong to combat it. Unfortunately, when COVID-19 came in, the attack is a global crisis. It affected the world everywhere. And we Africans now are suffering from major things. The Russian war has exacerbated the situation on the continent. We are believing to have our stable pool has become an absolute problem. And many nations or countries on the continent have been faced with stiff demonstration, protest, political backlash. There is disunity, lack of cohesion. In fact, the society now is more deeply divided than it ever used to be because the last hope of the common man could be just the justice being eroded. Then even the little thing that we depend on to live, that is food, is no longer available. Even when it is, you don't have it in enough quantity. Inflation is definitely taking place on the continent. So we have seen in the Western world, there are confrontations there. Even in Africa, there are a series of confrontations on the continent. So Gabon have moved swiftly to ensure that what they want, that they are employing, but it is a national conference in all sections within the country, around seven problems, they call upon their citizens to ensure that they canvass their opinions. After the sampling of these opinions, they are now asking the government to scrap all importation on food. Any tax on food importation, they are saying it should be scrapped. Let them forget about it. Because they want the government to be, if they want the people to perform austerity on this measure, we are we expect them to generate money to be paying for all of those things. So what the government should do is should subsidize for food. So that the little the man want, let him have it. So now they are urging the, the Gabonese government under Aliu Man Bungu to ensure that they scrap every tax importation on food. And Gabon, as I said the other time, the, 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 the Bungu uh, what, uh, family has ruled Gabon over the past 51 years. His father ruled the country for 14 years, and this is 41 years into power. The man is sick, he suffers from stroke, and doesn't even know what is going on into the country. They are fitly rich. It's an all-rich country, so they do not care. So the nation is actually calling upon these Gabonese, especially the government, to ensure that they scrap all importation of food. And they should also invest heavily in the country's agricultural sector. That is why Africa have a fatal land. A land where you and I wouldn't have been asking for food. But unfortunately, even though we have an agricultural rich land, where Africa could have been turned into an agrarian society, we keep asking the West for food. We keep importation of food. It is because our government, as they have infected, carefully infected our education system, and relegated it to a, a level that when you see people on the continent, it is only in Africa you see somebody with a double degree doesn't know even how to pronounce a single word, nor does he know how to construct English. You will see people, in fact, all our education is not helping to recruit food on the table. And some people who are very sound enough, they will tell you that I'm a doctor, that doctor cannot even, in fact, I'm a chemist, that chemist cannot even produce a paracetamol on his own. So many a time, we, our education in Africa is so theoretical to understand that it is not helping the continent. So in fact, in Africa, they regard agriculture as a common man mentality, and the nation is not helping, no nation is helping actually to, 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 to ensure that agriculture becomes a paramount thing on the continent. So what the Gabonese are, are asking or urging their government to do is to ensure that they empower the agricultural sector. And if the agricultural sector can be empowered, Gabon turns into an agrarian society, they can have the opportunity or they have the ability to what feed themselves. But if the government is not providing the enabling ground, we are doing they have to have agricultural extension officers, they have fertilizer whatsoever. Why what do you think the like of China, like the, the Asian tiger? You think about China, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and others. They are so rich today, it is not because of high standard of education. It is because they involve into the electronic world and they also empowered te technology. And when the technology is being empowered, it can help to facilitate our agricultural sector. So Gabon, the Gabonese are actually crying and they are hoping that that particular situation should be changed around, like let the government reduce or remove all taxes on food, stuff being imported into the country. And it should ensure that they empower the agricultural sector. So let's come. We go next in the Horn of Africa, that is Sudan. 
Sudan parliamentary leader ready to meet army. Ready to meet the army amid of tension. We all know Sudan when Bashar fell in 2019, uh, we had a civilian government that came into power. Hamdok was on the helm of affairs. The military committed a coup into coup, mm -hmm. used it as a means to ensure that they stay into power. After that particular coup, uh, a military leader is on, on the helm of affairs. Two coups are actually after three coups now. I mean, just say, okay, so let me, let me just accept the fact that uh, 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 um, the man called Omar al Bashir was the true by the civilians. We had a military civilian government as an interim one. That particular civilian government was overthrown. Later on, they sent Amdok. Amdok was also overthrown. And then on the military is fearing. Time is now nearing for them to hand over power to a, an, a, military, a civilian elected government. But subsections of the army, subsections or a, or a subsection of the country is definitely not happy. Or some sections of factions within the army are definitely not happy because they know that should the country be handed over to a civilian government they are going to be carefully and thoroughly investigated for crimes they committed against the country corruption embezzlement and mismanagement of the country's uh, economy and the lack of uh, Omar El Bashir could easily be uh, sent or extradited to the Hague for him to face prosecution. And should he get into the Hague, many of his current generals who are serving into the army will also be dragged into such situation. Those who are with that philosophy, with that school of thought, do not want the army into any means or any way to transfer power to the civilian. And if any section of the army we think or feel that before this time they have not been benefiting from a civil or a military led government want to do so, expect a coup to take place. So there are now tensions within the army itself because some people have suspected that the army is no longer willing to hand over power to the civilian or, or for them to conduct a free and, free and fair election so that a civilian could come into power. And if Free, free, free and fair election is not being conducted or the state another coup. It will also give the military the opportunity to keep being into power and protect themselves. And mind you, in Sudan, in fact, most of the top entrepreneurs in Sudan are military personnel. Some of them own estate. So, in fact, basically, some good sections within the country is being owned by the military. So, there is that type of maybe. Uh, and uh, what political fear, what may definitely happen if a situation like that coming. Let's come to Kenya, still in the Horn of Africa. This is why sometimes I say, some people think and feel that religion is the answer to everything. There is a pastor in Kenya, these Libra churches, the so-called freedom churches, the so-called churches where some people are even older than they are, they are members of that particular church. The pastor asks its membership to starve to death so that they can reach or they can meet their maker in heaven early. Did God tell you that? Which part of the Bible quoted such thing? So the pastor is then asking member to starve to death. It's a cultism. A negatively radicalized church with fanatic mentality that are not meant to develop the society. How can you ask the membership of your church to starve to death so that they can meet their maker? You would have called all upon the wrath of God to kill you all just a single day so that you can meet him. Even God that created death knows the painfulness of death. That is why you saw how Jesus Christ cried on the cross of Calvary. In the Bible, if you can keenly listen to what the Bible preaches, then why must you ask your membership to starve to death so that they can gain heaven? People should be very careful with the manner in which pastors are preaching. And some of these churches, it is only in Africa you see a married woman or certain homes obeying their pastors more than the couples or their husband. They will call their pastor, daddy, mommy, 
That is the thing. And they will end up to call their husband by names, even relegating them to a position that they do not belong to. They will end up obeying more the church than the home. And the Bible is against such thing. Now the so-called called church, a cultist who is a pastor, ordered or mandated his membership to starve to death so that they can gain heaven. It's now on the wrong. Four people have already lost their life. And the pastor is nowhere to be found. And some churches are exploiters. Pastors. What they do? Even that is why the little that people have, they still exploit it to them. They keep calling you to pray. Come, give me some money. I will pray for you so that you can have your destiny. Had you had the opportunity to, 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 uh, to command destiny for people, why is your destiny not changed? Why is your future not changed? What they normally do, they employ people. They even can keep exploiting people who are so poor to understand that. They buy jet. Look at places like Nigeria, how filthy rich pastors are. It's exploitation. It's the same mentality. They can even sleep with couples. Women are sleeping with certain pastors. So it's so bad. And the mentality, poverty, illiteracy, and ignorance lead us to too much religious thinking. And God is not a hater of any man. God knows our own destiny. God created us for a purpose. But some people are so superstitious. They don't even know the difference between superstition and faith. When people have faith, they work for it. When people have superstition, they think that everything will just come overnight. It is not a superstitious man will tell you that the mouth that God created will definitely eat. You don't go and walk and tell me how that mouth will eat. So when people are superstitious, they think that today when they sleep, if they're heading somewhere and it's open for them to stumble, their left foot is bad luck. Traffic and nonsense. It's a typical mentality that when people are so superstitious, in fact, when people are so religious to understand that they are not even at peace with their neighbor because they always think and feel that others are evil, they are good. And each time they see people, they have different type of connotation about people's life. And they think differently, they employ different things in the life of people. And when they sleep, if those things that they think about others is so negative and it comes to haunt them in their dream, the next day they will attack their neighbor that you are a witch, you are a wizard. Stupid. It's total foolishness. Look at what this pastor is doing. Poor people. Poor people are already dying. Four poor people are dead today because he asked them to starve to death. Must you ask me to lose my life before I gain heaven? God knows why he created me. And God knows that if I am to gain heaven, I will definitely gain it. You have never been to hell or heaven. You don't even know what is there. Nobody is against being religious. But the manner in which they are coming with their radicality, they call religious preaching, is definitely creating problems. No wonder Nigeria is in a total political tumor, anarchy, pandemonium everywhere because of this same religious mentality. It is only in Kenya we see pastors slapping people, say, I'm taking the devil out of you. It is only in Kenya, sometime ago in Kenya also we saw Jesus Christ coming, according to them, that Jesus Christ rise from heaven, rise in Kenya. In South Africa, in some part of 2019, another man asked his cameraman, to pretend that easy he dead and they put him into a coffin while the man was alive he called a crusade and asked everybody to be around that he is there to resurrect the man stupidly enough that camera man was resurrected when he was not even dead it was not only when video, uh, video footage cctv camera pointed out that the man in question is his camera man and he was being arraigned they dismissed him out of they are clergy men society. Look at what is happening. Why must you do such thing? I think people should actually tell Africans what is religion, what is faith, and what is superstition. This particular superstitious mentality is not helping the society. That is why idleness is too much. The time people will spend reading, they will end up going, it is only in Africa. I, I used to teach. You will see school pupils. Funnily enough, they will tell you that I am in church praying so that I can pass my exam. Don't go and study. I will tell me how you pass your exam. You see them pastors saying that it is somebody. You are not studying. How can you pass exam? There are some people who have never been to church or mocks. They are excellently good. Superb. Brim number one. 
characterization. Even God believes in relationship. But fortunately, these are some of the things happening. You see, everything they think is related. Even when something is scientific, they call it religious. Even when something is practical, is, is, is practical they think it is theoretical. So we don't know the type of school of thought that they are going in. People are not so empirical. People should have a pragmatic way of watching that thing. Some people are so idealistic to understand that they forget about reality. So there are certain times, and idealism is actually good. But the reality is quite different from the idea that you normally concord into that of your stupid head. You come with it out. Look at what they are doing. Five people, I mean four people lost their life because a pastor asked them, starve to death and meet your maker. Did God ask you to starve to death so that you can meet him? So when you meet God hungry, that means God will answer your prayers. Or God will bless you. Who told you that all those people who are futilely rich are godly as you are? The book of James. James 5, 25 or 27. He says, sometimes benevolence is a good part of religion. Some people are very kind. So it doesn't mean how many times you attend church. And they even start to preach in tongue. If you ask them what are they in they will tell you not. Anybody, I can tell you for free, anybody who is so religious is never at peace with his neighbor. I'm not talking about religion. Uh, uh, those who are negatively radicalized in time of this Christian, this born again mentality. The end of the target, everybody is a target. They can even target you for your simple way of life. Even when you are at home, you pray, they think that you are ungodly. What God? Did Jesus Christ attack anybody? You better go into Nigeria and join this Bujihadist mentality. Forceful conversion of Islam. So wrong. So this is exactly thing that is taking to place today in church. How on earth can you ask your members to starve to death so that they can meet their maker? What type of pastor is that? And they use those who are illiterate to propagate this message to them. And when somebody is poor, he or she is ignorant. And most of them are illiterate. So they do not know. The three greatest enemies of mankind are poverty, illiteracy, and ignorance. And they use these people as their customers to preach this, what they call, prosperity message to them. That is why when you enter into church, all about them is preaching about prosperity. And they will end up to ask for three or four offerings per church. And when you enter into church, they will give you so many of envelopes that you will not even have the courage to come there the next day again. So they have bastardized and relegated the, 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 the life of our society. Some people who are students, they will spend whole time praying to God. God, make me to pass my exam. God asks you to go and study. Even the Bible, if you do not study the Bible, you will not pass. You will not know the Bible. All pastors who excellently quote the Bible are people who study well. Why do you think the like of John C. Suleiman, David Odeipo, even the late uh, T.B. Joshua, Pastor Chris, and others are doing good? They are highly educated. Highly educated. You will see young man who should be in school will take a Bible, watching, passing from one church and telling them I'm an evangelist. Do you have this, the courage to evangelize? At the end of the day, when they pray for you, they ask you for their transport. It's the same thing. When you enter into transport, or a transport vehicle, or this uh, passenger vehicle to come in, they will preach and preach and preach. Just after I ask you, give us, uh, give to God. Say, give to pastor. So this situation, I think, is pathetic and uh, sometimes hilarious. Because you can't ask me to starve to death to go and meet God. No. God gave me a belly. I should eat. If I have the opportunity, I will eat and eat and eat. But God did not tell me that if I want to gain heaven, I should start with them. That pastor needs to be arrested. The church needs to be locked down. And the membership needs to be cautioned. And people should be very careful to the type of preaching that they listen. Because most of these liberation messages are ending up to entangle them into poverty. Let's come into Nigeria. Bandits shoot a dead in Nigerian homes. It's a shame. Bula Metinubu is yet to be inaugurated. The society is deeply deteriorating. There are divided opinions. Christians and Muslims are not seen one way. Both the Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Fulanese, all of them do not have compromise. 
Nigeria is a big society, full of blessing because its population is a huge blessing, its natural resources is a huge blessing, classically placed in Africa, but it's, it is now using a blessing to create cause for itself. People are being killed on a daily basis. 70, 80 we are killed. 70 we are killed some part of last week, and last 80 we are shot dead in the new state, then 70 we are killed in River State. Then people have been shot into their homes in the name of money. That is why they said, maybe we say, sometimes we say money is the root of all evil. Some people, when you trust them too much, when you give them little opportunity to have money, they misuse it. So the Nigerian society, the politicians are almost always responsible for this because they have impoverished the society. People are now living in abject poverty. So what do they do? They use what they have to get what they want. So banditry is the order of the day. Kidnapping for ransom is the order of the day. Jihadist movement is the order of the day. Insurgent movement is the order of the day. So Nigeria is now deeply divided, a volatile situation. And come to think of it, a very old man like Ashiwa Ajibola Amentinubu, who is mentally good but not physically strong, and he mental uh, sassiness will also start to drop. They make him to be the president of Nigeria. Kudos to INEC. Kudos to all who voted for him. And close to the way Nigerian election is being uh, organized. But trust me, the security situation in Nigeria will deteriorate more than what happened during Buhari days. Because Ashira Jibola Ahmed in the is not even well, according to popular claims. And his assumption into office will be like continuity, a continuity of the APC agenda. What Buhari, where Buhari left is where he's going to take. From one Muslim to another, congratulations. From one party uh, expert to another party, call himself the godfather of Nigerian politics. But there is nothing happening. So let us be careful on which political party to elect, on which background. So Nigeria is deeply divided, and everybody is fearing what may happen when uh, the court system is so slow, nobody is saying. I neck on her own when definitely to say Yakubu, Mahmoud Yakubu, the chairman of I neck, is now asking the election tribunal court to drop all the charges brought by the opposition against or the petition brought into the court by the opposition against Ashira Jibola Tinubu being declared the winner. He said they are incompetent, they are vacuum and two academic these are the three words that they use just because they are incompetent they are vacuum and two academic say so there is nothing the evidence is not sustainable or not not they are not substantial to ensure that such a uh, 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 should stop the the the, the, the inauguration of ashiva jubola amen on the 29th and as far as i'm concerned he's definitely going to be inaugurated and nothing will definitely happen because just after the inauguration he will become full fresh president of nigeria and even have the opportunity to retire some of these judges in 31 system i mean if he doesn't retire them afterwards they are still his overlord uh, appointees that is uh uh, uh, uh buhari so it's just a continuation of things banditry kidnapping ransom taking and uh, all that things jihadist movement are definitely on the rise in Nigeria. Let pray and hope that it shouldn't escalate elsewhere because some of us are alarmed with the situation. Burkina Faso mobilization rams up terror response. Burkina Faso is saying by the end of this year they will definitely seize over forty percent of the territory that belonged to the jihadists, which was previously under Mr. Government. Traore is not a good guy. It's not so wise to handle Burkina Faso, and the country is fastly falling hand into falling into the hands of jihadists. France is no longer available. Russia was invited, but Russia is fighting a very big war against Ukraine on a daily basis. We are seeing what is happening in Bakhmut. How many Russians are being killed over there? And you know, war is one of the one of the what huge investment into the world. Because each bullet is being fired, will not definitely come back. Each arms and ammunition are being destroyed, we need other, other things to do. And now, Burkina Faso thinks and feels that 
they can rely on Russia. It's a zero ambition. And now kidnapping and jihadist movement are on the rise. Burkina Faso is partially deteriorating into a very problematic and troublesome society where it will end up to create issues for Africa. And the military is not competent enough to handle the situation. Young from one young person to another, it is only in Burkina Faso three coups are taking place within the shortest time. And who knows what may happen? So let's be careful and let's understand the situation. And we are praying and hoping that the situation does not go. Now they are even forcing what they are using, what they call conscription. Forcefully joining the army, they will ask you to do to either join the army or they will conscript you. They are banned France 24 and also RFI, RFI and other radio stations. The thing can feel that France 24 is serving as a mouthpiece for the jihadist movement because they provide a platform where their jihadist mentality can be uh, disseminated through expressions. And the thing that feel that RFI reported on an abuse of key of children who were actually killed in one military camp for failure to join the army, they claimed that it was wrong. And now all international media, maybe we may end up hearing the BBC should not also brush that over there. So it's shameful. We should be very careful. Then I'll come to Burkina Faso, that is in Southern, in, in Botswana, in Southern Africa. Botswana leader denies he plans to sack his VP. Popularly, people are claiming that Ma Mumasi, the president, plans to sack his vice president. But Mumasi say no, he doesn't plan to sack his vice president. And the vice president had been with him since his election. And he thinks and feels that if you are about to retire from politics, it is the VP that should take over from him. And sometimes ago, people are saying we are claiming that the VP may end up to retire from politics for him to go into private life. Why? There is, rumor, there is no rumor without the element of truth. So let's watch and see. And we don't know either the VP will retire or the, the president will sack him. One of those things are definitely bound to happen. But there are times again, maybe the VP has been found wanting in one or two ways. For him to save his nose or save his face, they can either ask him to resign or be sacked. But if he is sacked, trust me, investigation will come. But if he resigns, maybe it could be like on the compromise. So let's watch and see. Supporters should be very careful. Let's come into Southern Africa again. South Af popular South Africa rapist fears poisoning, food poisoning. This man rape and kill his victims. It will, this is the same I'm saying poverty, literacy. Even here, it does happen. Some people are falling victim of Facebook users, especially in places like Nigeria. Some people have been swindled of their money. Some people have been defrauded of their money. Some people have lost their life in places like Nigeria. They will pretend that the best men and people communicate with you on Facebook, especially for females. They will rape you and kill you and use you for rituals in Nigeria. In South Africa, it's the same thing. He will call you, he will rape you and kill you. So he was being arrested and escaped prison. And he has finally been arrested. He's facing trials. But this so-called dude says, He's not going to eat because he fears that he could be poisoned into the prison. And his lawyers are saying he has been actually sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. And he may ask for bail, but not now. But the man is claiming that he may not end up to eat any of the food in prison because he does not want to be poisoned. Then let's come to uh, Morocco. Child rapists get longer jail terms after public outbreak. Rabat, Morocco. Three men were accused of repeatedly raping an 11 years old girl when they were arrested. The so-called magistrate has the audacity, has the temerity, the constitutional unscrupulous mandate according to him to sentence those guys to 18, 18 months imprisonment. It was popular demonstration, call of foul play. Who knows what type of money they might have given him. So the Supreme Court overturned his decision, and the guys have been sentenced to 20 years in prison and 10 years in prison 
respectively. And the unfortunate part for the young girl that was being raped, she's now 12, she has given birth. DNA test was carried on. One of the rapists is confirmed to be the father. Who knows how that particular child may end up being? And how can you be a product of a rapist? See the trauma. And if the child grows up, how will she watch at the dad? It's so pathetic. It's so pathetic. It was so horrible. Now, that man is now in incarceration, but he is fathering a child with a 12 year old girl. They repeatedly rape her. Africa, be very careful. Then finally, let any Liberia, Mama Liberia. The Supreme Court dismissed request to hold voters' registration exercise. It was alleged that the voters' registration exercise being done without demarcation, constituency demarcation, we give the upper hand to the ruling party that is led by George Open Weir. Having said that, uh, they actually requested for the Supreme Court to halt the voter registration exercise to ensure that constituency demarcation is being properly done. Then uh, they may go ahead to do the voter registration exercise after the first phase was completed but with a lot of hitches. Elections are actually slated for October, where old and young generation will be against themselves. Let me read the news to you. Liberia Supreme Court on Wednesday dismissed opposition's request to halt the ongoing nationwide voter registration ahead of October presidential and legislative election. The collaborating party, political party, CPP, claim listing voters without first demarcating constituencies according to the recent national census was unconstitutional. But in a unanimous verdict, the court said it saw no basic for disturbing the voters' registration exercise since the National Election Commission's neck was not in violation of the Constitution as alleged. According to the court, the case did not constitute an election matter. The court ruling allows the electoral body to move ahead with phase two of the voter registration exercise, having already conducted phase one last month, which was overshadowed by a series of technical glitches. Liberia's population grown by 50.4 percent to 50 to 5.2 million people, according to 2022 provisional result released in February. Opposition fears the numbers might be manipulated to favor George Weir, who is facing strong challenges in his re-election bid. That is according to their submission. Unfortunately, with all their eloquences in presenting their matter to court, the Supreme Court says, no, it is not unconstitutional and INEC has not violated any law that we stop them from going ahead with the voter registration exercise. And stupidly enough, some of this opposition will tell their citizens their voters, don't go and don't go and vote. In fact, don't go and register. And when they fail to go to register, they will not vote for you. But remember, remember, I'm closing with this statement. When good citizens do not vote, bad leaders are always elected. Thank you. It's been me, Edward Amara, focus on Liberia, West African correspondent coming with the latest news on the continent. Thank you. Good night.